All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Meyer Teton 104. This is 104 width underfoot, and I skied this in a 185 length. Now, these skis were sent to me by Meyer. I did not get paid for this review. I am not paid by anyone. They are just a small local ski maker out of Denver, Colorado and these skis are made in America, made in Colorado, made by hand. Let's just talk specs and stats. Now this ski weighs 2,050 grams in this 185 length. It has a turn radius of 19 meters, which you definitely feel. Now make no mistake, this is a big, beefy powder ski. It's not super light, but it doesn't feel heavy because it has such good flotation in the powder. So I'm going to be grading this as a powder ski, not as an all-mountain ski, and I may need to reassess how I graded the peak skis previously because these are the same width as the peak skis. And I will say, if you are looking for an all mountain do everything ski, the peak is definitely more in that all mountain carving category. This ski does well, it does fine on the groom trails, but it is not as like all mountain. I'm gonna be grading these as a powder ski because they definitely feel like a powder ski. But that's not a bad thing. Now that we've talked about the specs, now that we've kind of talked about where the ski's category is, Let's talk review and let's talk about how it actually felt on the snow. Now when you hold them in your hand, you can see they've actually got a pretty healthy amount of camber here. Very similar in characteristics to the QST 106. Probably about the same amount of camber, same amount of splay in the tails and the tips. The first thing honestly that you notice or that I had many people talk to me about when I was riding up the chair is Wow, these are beautiful skis. Just the graphics on the top sheets are stunning. Now, I don't typically care about top sheets. Usually it's covered in snow anyway, but I did get like two or three people complimenting me on the chair, so worth noting if you care about this thing. They don't really show that well on the website, but they are very pretty skis in person. Now, on snow, my first impression with these was actually very fun. Little jumps I did were fun on them. The landing was fun on them. I took them on one of my favorite powder days this year and just had a blast with them. I gotta say, you know, I don't even, I've never met the Meyer people. I've barely talked to them with just getting these skis. But whatever they're doing is very underspoken and the performance is there for sure. These have a very well-crafted turn shape. If that makes any sense, just like the way that they turn the powder feels really good. That's just my first impression when I first got them off trail. I go, oh, like this turn shape, it's not like a QST, but it's more of just like kind of a gradual run on smooth powder turn and it felt great. And it, it didn't feel like any other ski I've taken on the powder. It was very, very unique and also like very finely crafted. It doesn't do any big gimmicky things. There's no holes in the skis. There's nothing like, you know, high tech here. But whatever they did with like the consistency of what the skis made and the shape of the ski made for just a really great feeling turn. It feels like somebody who is building this just kept making iterations of it until they found the sweet spot and the turn shape that they liked. And I gotta say, I really like the ski's turn shape. But now that we've talked first impression Let's get into the details. Let's talk good and then we'll talk about the bad. The good on this ski is honestly kind of covered by the first impressions. They feel so smooth when you turn them. In the powder, everything kind of feels dialed in. I also really like their flotation. Whatever they're doing with this kind of splay and kind of gradual tip shape is very smooth. Like it did not catch under the powder. I found myself even in areas where I didn't think I was gonna come back up, they always kind of floated to the top. So whatever it is with the material and the shape is really well suited for powder skiing and going off trail with them. Um, they were also very stable when I took them at higher speeds in the powder. I think if you're in a big open area, these are just a blast to ski powder with. The other thing I like about them is like the evenness when they flex when you're on the trail. I like the material. I like how gradual they feel in and out of turns. Honestly, this list of things I like might feel short, but this is the stuff that matters. It's fine if this ski has a lot of downsides, we'll talk about those, but honestly, having those things be done well is so much more important to me. I put out my Armada ARV review for the 100s. These are only four millimeters width underfoot wider. They're barely wider and it is night and day difference. If you're looking for a good powder ski, something that's gonna feel smooth in the good stuff, this is one of the smoothest feeling skis I've put on my feet for powder day. 
The QST106 is very similar, but just something about the turn being kind of wrapped out. It has to be a longer radius turn. The Salomon QST106 has better short radius turns, but the long open radius turns when you're going in big powder, I gotta say, that's where this ski really shines and it's pretty much unmatched. I like the Atomic Bent 110 and the Salomon QST106 overall more, but in that big wide open surfy turn, this like in that one fine tuned area, this ski is better than both of those. The Salomon QST106 you know, I would say is a better platform overall. If you're just looking for that one big open sweet spot, you know, that kind of big sweeping powder turn where you kind of kick up snow as you go, this felt the best. I mean, this feel absolutely amazing. Meyer skis doesn't seem to be like looking for high tech stuff or we're gonna, you know, do something first. But the stuff that they want to be good at, they have really fine-tuned and dialed in, and they do a great job of it. I said that in my Wrangler review, and it holds true for the Grand Teton as well. Oh my gosh, I just reread the skis, and I think they're just called the Meyer Tetons. <laughs> These skis really are kind of fascinating in how they take the approach of, we're not going to try to do 100 things well, we're going to pick one thing, and we're going to do it really well. And I gotta say, I have a lot of respect for that mentality. Now that we talked about the good, let's talk about the bad. There's not a lot of bad. I mean, these are getting a high score overall, but these are more like just nitpicks or weaknesses of the ski. The thing that you notice kind of right out the gate is that these are not like an atomic bent 110. They are much closer in the vein of a Salomon QST 106. And what I mean by that is these are not quick little short radius turns in the trees. These are big open turns. So what happens is with this big kind of open turn radius, you get that beautiful turn like I talked about previously. But these can take a little long to come around and they can be a little cumbersome. At least where I ski. I ski in Idaho where we have big open areas and these feel really good at the top of the hill. But as you come down in elevation, you get more into the brush and the bramble. And that's where these struggle a little bit more. It can take a while to bring these around. If you get into the trees, they're not great at tree skiing. They're not gonna be able to bop around and make those super quick turns. Now you can hop them and you can make them work. But just so you know, if you're looking for something that's like really just kind of biting hop turn, you know, little quick pull plant turns, this ski can do it if you force it, but that is not where the ski thrives. I would say honestly, if you're looking for something like that, the Wrangler does a really good job on that, but this is its own ski. This is for big open areas and big beautiful lines. So I will say you definitely feel it in the short radius turns. It does not do as well as the peak skis. It does not do as well as even the Meyer's own ski, the Wrangler 94. This ski is really meant to kind of savor a big open powder turn. I'll also say like, you know, they're not gonna blast you in and out of carving turns. They feel good, they feel like a big stable platform, but they're not kind of a quick responsive ski. So I would say honestly, that's the ski's biggest weakness. It can be a little gradual with building pressure in the turn. It can be a little kind of slow and methodical with this turn, but <laughs> The trade-off is you get a really beautiful turn. If you're looking for a quick turn or you're looking for a tree specific turn, just know you're gonna have to work a little bit extra hard for those shorter radius turns. And that is honestly the ski's only big weakness or characteristic. But like I said, I don't sell skis. I don't care if you buy skis. I just want you to know the good and the bad so if you buy them, you don't get kind of buyer's remorse or oh, I bought these and I didn't know the ski's weaknesses. Because when I watch reviews, I hardly see anyone talking about weaknesses, so I'm here to tell you about them. Especially a more boutique, handmade brand like Meyer. there's not a lot of information online, so I'm here to help you. I know a lot of people aren't searching for Meyer skis on YouTube and Google, but I don't care. I like this brand, I like what they're doing, and I wanna give you information so you can at least be educated if you're looking at them or interested in them. So, that's their big trade-off. Um, they're a little bit on the heavier side, but like I said, when you get in good flotation, the shape kind of handles that well, so it's not a big deal. The other downside is if you do not have powder and you're kind of trying to take these on the groomers, there's not a ton of difference between the tip and the tail, so sometimes the tail can drag a little bit on the end of the turn. You don't really notice it, and like I said, you should probably just be taking these out as powder skis. I wouldn't try to just make these a one ski quiver or all mountain ski. If you want to get the skis real value, I would let it specialize in what it's good at and that's big open turns in nice deep powder. Now let's talk price and value. The Meyer Tetons come in at 995. 
Uh, but right now you can buy them for $7.95. And I'm, again, if you're selling them for $7.95 in February, I'm just going to assume that that's a pretty normal price. I guess I don't know. I don't follow what their pricing is. I'm just letting you know what it is right now. But that's a pretty good price for powder skis. I mean, I'm used to kind of like being really, really value-minded and like I wait till the summer and I get my, you know, Salmons for $550 to $600. But for a powder ski at $795 midwinter, I think that's pretty good, especially again, because they're handcrafted, handmade, made in Colorado. You can get custom graphics if you work with like a designer. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot going for this brand. They're handmade and even this ski, which is more expensive, is still less than the Stokely and you're getting it made locally here. So I don't know. I think $7.95, as ludicrous as it sounds, is a fair price. For getting a handmade ski for $800 that's also a powder ski and this big, I don't know, it seems like a ton of value to me. Yeah, I don't know, I would buy them while they're on sale. $9.95 is a little more extreme for me, although maybe if you're in the handmade like category, that makes a little bit more sense to you. But at $7.95, that makes a lot of sense to me. So I'd say the value is overall pretty good. It's not like, two thumbs up, but it's like a three quarters thumbs up. Now finally, let's throw a, let's throw a score on these bad boys. I think that all things considered, this ski is a solid eight out of 10. It's not changing the game of anything. It's not introducing any new technology. It's not doing anything crazy like the QST or the Bent 110 as far as like changing the game of what a powder ski can be. What it's choosing to do instead is specialize in one specific turn type and be really good at it. And like I said before, when you get that solid open turn in the big powder, or like when I was kind of sending it faster down the powder than I usually do and able to make those clean turns, the ski just felt like it was at its best. So I would say that this is an eight out of 10. It definitely is a little sluggish when you're going in the trees and I wouldn't suggest this as just a tree ski. This is definitely more of like a big open hill powder ski or you want something that is reliable and gonna hold you up on the snow days, the big snow days. The thing is too, like when there's a big powder day, you want the ski to perform. If you have a bad ski on a powder day, there is nothing more heartbreaking. And what I really appreciate about these skis is on those days and in those areas, that's when the ski delivered at its best. And that's why for me, this is an eight out of 10. This ski just chooses not to do any gimmicks, not to do any like crazy things with the ski, but instead perfect what the ski cares about. And what the ski cares about is nice, smooth, surfy turns, washing out cleanly, and letting you enjoy the fresh powder. And if that's something you care about, then I can highly recommend the Meyer Teton. And I think eight out of 10 is very fair, given that like, you know, it's not revolutionizing anything, but it's choosing to be a specialty, big open turn powder ski, and I have a lot of respect for that. And I don't think there's any powder day where I'd be upset. In fact, this is the first ski that I took up with me based on the Wrangler review, and I didn't bring a second pair of skis, which is risky business in the powder. But it seems like when the conditions are good, this ski company is here to deliver. So for me, the Meyer Teton is an eight out of 10. What a beautiful ski. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the Meyer Tetons. I really like these skis. Uh, I had a blast taking them out in the powder and I don't know, I keep recommending them to like my friends and family. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, it's a good powder. You wanna take the skis? And they probably think I'm a crazy person, but that's okay. I, I like these, I had a blast on them. And I think when you get it into its sweet spot, it really thrives, so anyway. That's all my thoughts on the Meyer Teton ski. Again, I skied this in a 185 and it's a 104 millimeter width underfoot, but a lot of fun. And if you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps my channel out a lot. Like I said before, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I don't, you know, get paid for any kind of reviews. It's just me and my honest opinions. You know, and my unstained fence back there. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to support the channel, liking and subscribing is like the easiest free way to do that. But you can also become a member. Um, if you go to my YouTube homepage and hit the join button, there's a bunch of perks there. But more than anything, just thanks for being here and thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys watching this content. There are a lot of brands that don't send me skis and you know, because you guys watch these videos, I'm able to review these brands. And a big shout out to Meyer Skis. There's not a lot of companies willing to send me their skis so, and be honest, brutally honest, about what I think about their skis. It takes a lot of cojones to do that, so I give Meyer all the respect in the world. I really appreciate you guys sending me these skis. But as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.